on the fact that Stormy Daniels now claims that she is a medium and that she communicates with dead people and has participated in a TV store, uh, TV series about the paranormal where she explores things, including the fact that at one point an ex-boyfriend of hers was inhabited by spirits. She was mocking Stormy Daniels. She wants the jury to think Stormy Daniels is a liar and she is crazy. And she also wants the jurors to judge her for her occupation. And Stormy Daniels gave no ground on that. As Sue just said, she might be an exotic dancer, an adult film actor, but she was very clear when Susan Necklace used the phrase selling yourself to describe what Stormy Daniels was doing on a tour where she was making appearances at clubs. Stormy Daniels set her straight. I was not selling myself. I was dancing. The implication always was I am not a sex worker and I don't have a sign around my neck that says consent given freely to everyone at any time. Right. She was a woman who seemed pretty self-possessed, in control of her own body and wanting to maintain essentially to quote pretty woman, I say who I say when and not you know, Donald Trump was yeah. mine, uh, that I was for the taking by this man. I increasingly see what Trump did to Stormy Daniels, and she used the phrase, what happened to me, more insidiously than I think I ever have. It is a reinforcement of the predator frame that the Access Hollywood tape introduced. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the Stormy Daniels hush money trial. A trial that the mainstream liberal media is now relying on in order to have Trump be convicted of something before the election. Because we all know that's what they want. And when it comes to the Jack Smith cases, the Fannie Willis case, it seems as if those cases are definitely not happening before the election. Delay, delay, delay. In Florida, delayed indefinitely. Now, Georgia, it has been a rough few days for Jack Smith and Fonnie Willis. Mark, do you think we are we are going to see any progress here before the election and after the election? Do you think these trials are ever going to happen? Well, well, I don't know. But I mean, the key question is anything going to happen before the election? And I think the answer is no. The days of magical legal thinking are over. It's it, the cavalry is not coming. The legal cavalry is not coming to the rescue of Joe Biden. OK, so Democrats are now reliant on an adult film actress to get the job done for them and normally an adult film actress when it comes to her mouth is pretty reliable however in this situation it seems as if stormy daniels is really blowing it here to the point where her testimony is just too hard to swallow i mean who could have saw this coming so danny seven and a half hours or so of testimony from stormy daniels over a couple of days truly you just have to stop and Consider the surreal, historic nature of it, a form of actress sitting across from a former president of the United States making these accusations at him while he's in the middle of a presidential campaign, by the way. But from your point of view, from where you're sitting, at the end of the day, what kind of witness was Stormy Daniels for the prosecution? Unnecessary. Stormy Daniels, in my view, re mm. represents an unnecessary risk for the prosecution. Here's why. I can't think of any piece of evidence that they got from Stormy Daniels on the prosecution that they couldn't have gotten or didn't already get from other witnesses. The transaction from Cohen to Daniels was established through other witnesses, including Keith Davidson, her former lawyer. The, to the extent that her, the value of her story increased as the election approached, we've already heard that evidence from other witnesses. Mm -hmm. So you may say, well, look, Stormy Daniels was about context, and that's true. but. When you think about all the other witnesses, Madeline Westerhout, uh, Hope Hicks, people with really unimpeachable credibility, if you could get that evidence from them, why risk Stormy Daniels? Because you saw in Stormy Daniels a request for a mistrial, which was going to be denied. But in my view, the very first major appealable issue that you might see up at the appellate division. So if the prosecution gets a conviction and this case comes back in two years and it's overturned the conviction then the prosecution's going to ask themselves was it worth the risk if the reason that the conviction's overturned is testimony that was given by stormy daniels especially if they could have gotten that information from somewhere else and i'll just say look i'm in the minority i don't think stormy daniels performed yeah. particularly well on cross-examination uh, witnesses she's one of those witnesses that just decided i am not going to give a yes or no answer because I know that's what the cross-examining attorney wants. She fought back at every turn. And yes, to some extent, did she zing Donald Trump and the cross-examining attorney, Susan Nichols? 
Yes, but at the same time, witnesses who refuse to answer yes or no, refuse to give an inch, sometimes juries see them as concealing things. And that's it. that's what Stormy Daniels did. Yeah, so you see now you heard that, okay? When you have Trump deranged MSNBC even admitting that, hey, it's not going so well for Stormy Daniels in her testimony, uh, you know it's not going so well. I personally believe that we could get a best case scenario of Trump being found not guilty and then having none of the other cases happen before the election, which in my opinion, in the court of public opinion, that would make Trump's claims that, hey, this is a political witch hunt uh, and that these people are just going after me, even though they don't really have anything, I think it will make his claims a lot more credible. In fact, again, it would be the best case scenario for Trump to be found not guilty and then for the other trials not to happen. I mean, the mainstream liberal media would lose their minds, lose their minds, okay? So again, this is why they're desperate. They're desperate for Stormy Daniels to deliver the goods, okay? Uh, but again, she seems to be blowing in, which, you know, nobody should be surprised about. I mean, that's her specialty. So with that being said, uh, this takes me to this interview here with the BBC, ha ha ha, right, BBC, uh, and this based lawyer, um, Mike Davis, okay, who is going to, uh, basically school this BBC journalist on what's happening with this Stormy Daniels case. So without further ado, let's get into it. And now I'm joined by Mike Davis, the man tapped to be Trump's attorney general if he wins in November. And later we'll be speaking to Rena Shah, Republican commentator and political strategist who has worked as a senior advisor in Congress. Uh, Mike Davis, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, you know, let's, let's uh, ask you first of all, what do you make of the trial and how damaging do you think, you'll have heard Anthony Zercher there perhaps, how damaging could it be to Donald Trump? Well, first of all, I'm not going to be Trump's attorney general. Uh -huh. I've been trolling people, and I've made that very clear. Uh, I would say the fact that, it, that this this woman you just had on is, did you say that she was a, a star? And no, one of I Stormy said she Daniels? was an adult. I said she was an adult film star. She's a friend of Stormy Daniels, who uh, you will have heard said that she was in the room that night. She was uh, on the phone that night when Stormy Daniels called her, and Donald Trump spoke to her. So she was commenting on how stormy, how the trial was going. But I wonder how you think the trial is going. Well, I think it's perfectly uh, fitting that a star would be on your show and talking about a alleged sexual encounter that was trying that they were trying to arrange in 2006. This is complete and total nonsense. This is garbage. This is about trying to humiliate President Trump and to interfere in the 2024 presidential election. Facts. And this is why the mainstream liberal media, they're upset. This is why they're saying, oh, it's over, <laughs> right? When it comes to all of these other trials, okay? Because it's all about the 2024 election, okay? It's not about, you know, actually getting it right, okay? Making sure that everything is good before the trial starts, get a clean trial. No, 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 they don't want that. They want, it, a, they want a rush job, a rush job to get a conviction against Trump. So that, um, you know, they can try to affect the outcome of the 2024 election. But again, it's just a humiliation ritual. This is what they're trying to do uh, against Trump. And uh, again, this guy is totally correct. This alleged encounter that Stormy Daniels says happened was in 2006. There was a settlement of a nuisance claim and put in the books in 2017. And somehow that interfered in the election in 2016 with this 2000. 17 accounting and somehow that was a bookkeeping misdemeanor that president trump's so, accountants booked in his his well, books well, as a is, legal expense and and this is all what's being uh, uh, debated in court um but you said on fox news two weeks ago that um the court's an illegal clearly there is an illegal unconstitutional gag order here why do you think that's true i mean do you think any defendant should be able to speak out about the judge. Yeah, in the, in the United States of America, we have something called the Constitution, and we have the First Amendment and the Sixth Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment. And if there's anyone on the planet who should have the constitutional right to speak out against the judge, the prosecutor, their staffs, the witnesses, their biases, the process, it is a criminal defendant going through the criminal process. 
Uh, you don't gag criminal defendants in America. I don't know what you guys do with the, in the United Kingdom, but in America, we have constitutional rights, and they've turned the Constitution on its head by gagging a criminal defendant, while this judge, whose adult daughter, Lauren Mushan, is raising millions of dollars off of this case, requiring her recusal under New York statute, is allowing Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen, Stormy Daniels, a star who's raising money off this trial on her pen to uh, Twitter profile on her pen tweet on what? Twitter on X and you have Michael Cohen who's a disbarred attorney and a convicted perjurer raising money on TikTok and now you just had this bimbo star say that President I think, I think calling a bimbo star is, is pretty offensive and I, I'd like to ask you um, what you make of the trial in terms of the possibility that actually in a way that Donald Trump could benefit, you know, from his, certainly from his base, but benefit, uh, because you might have heard Anthony Zurcher saying that it is having an impact in the camp, but it may not be a negative one. You just had a bimbo <laughs> come out and accuse President Trump of trying to have a threesome with Stormy Daniels. This woman <laughs> is so credible that the prosecutor doesn't want to call her in to be a witness. I mean, I she's would, let, the let's just be quite clear. Let, let me just ask you a question. You think. It is totally outlandish that Donald Trump would ever have a threesome. I just want to ask you that totally outlandish would never happen. It, it's not relevant at all to this criminal prosecution. And that's the point of Stormy Daniels' testimony. Not only is it not relevant under Rule 401 of the Rules of Evidence, it is unfairly prejudicial under Rule 403. And the fact that this judge has President Trump gagged where he can't respond to Michael Cohen and he can't respond to Stormy Daniels and this bimbo star you just had on <laughs> who made that uh, malicious smear against President Trump, he can't respond to that or he goes to jail. That just proves what a kangaroo court this is. This is Democrat lawfare and election interference. And frankly, the BBC should be ashamed of itself that you just put a bimbo Okay. I, think we get, I think we get the message. I think we get the message about how you're addressing her. Uh, and I'm. Thank you very much for joining us. What, what, what would you call? What would you call her? I would call her a woman who happens to be either a, a film star or a, a, she has a job. I don't think you know, that you've yeah. any uh, she, particular she locus in this. She definitely has a job. This. She definitely has a job. Well, let's talk to Alana because uh, she is still here. Do yeah. Um, Again, I just find it hilarious how this BBC reporter is uh, offended by this guy. Basically, you know, hey, calling it what it is, right? Hey, this is, you know, a accurate description of this woman and, you know, what she does or these women. And, uh, you know, they're offended by that, right? Oh, no, you're not supposed to call them what they are. You're supposed to just, you know, you know, be, be, be soft on them, even though they're trying to essentially... Uh, take down the former president of the United States. They're trying to have him locked up in jail, right? They're trying to smear him as some type of predator. That's totally fine, right? Again, this is what uh, Stormy Daniels is, is currently trying to do in court. But yet, if you call her what she is, right, what she's done throughout most of her life, okay, oh, well, that's offensive, right? You're, you're supposed to not hurt her feelings, right? Don't hurt her feelings, okay? Again, it's just, it's fascinating. Do you think, uh, Alana Davis, do you think that Stormy Daniels ever regrets speaking out? Absolutely not. In fact, I would imagine she was more frustrated that she had to sign a non-disclosure agreement in the first place that stopped her from speaking out. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, well, she didn't have to sign it. Uh, you know, she chose to sign it, right? But with that being said... Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like this is going particularly well. Uh, I personally don't know how it was going to end, but regardless, it seems like, again, it could be a scenario where if Trump is found not guilty here, um, then, um, again, that's the best case scenario going into the election because he's not going to have any other trials and the Democrat party and their plan will officially just fall apart. Right. And, uh, I would love to see that, um, you know, just getting, some of the reactions for the mainstream liberal media, uh, it seems as if they're not that confident in, um, you know, the prosecution getting a guilty verdict here. I mean, in fact, this was the weakest case. And it really is a shame that uh, we have to witness the former president of the United States have his constitutional right to free speech taken away because he's speaking truths and pushing back against the criticism that he's getting. I mean, all these other characters are allowed to benefit from this and to say what they want to say about the former president, but he's not allowed to defend himself. 
again, is ridiculous. It, it really is uh, an embarrassment to this country that we currently have all of this stuff going on, these attacks, these political persecutions against the former president. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.